Eliana. Hi. What are we doing? Are we changing the clock spring? <laughs> the clock spring install for this one is a little bit different than from than the than the Jeeps with the JKs with uh, from 2007 to 2010. 2011 got the new interior, but it has the old. Uh, it has the 3.8. And then 2012, and you where they got the 3.6 and the new interior uh, as well. Uh, and it's a little bit easier. Uh, first step is disconnect the battery. I'm going to show you that. Just disconnect the damn battery. Uh, second step is uh, you're going to get a 10 mil. I got an extension. It's about two two inch extension. Um, I'm going to show you where the bolts are at. All right, guys. This is the end result of all the tools that I use. But I'm going to put this in the beginning of the video so you can see what I ended up using. Uh, so, the bought several uh, T20 uh, screws and sockets and whatever. Uh, this I use this one the most. Um, all different styles. You got the uh, 10, 10 mil for the battery to disconnect it. You got, I believe this is a uh, 10 socket for the two side bolts. A flathead to pry open the uh, the plastic shrouds top and bottom piece underneath the uh, steering wheel, steering column. Um, ratchet, another ratchet. With a, this uh, this one has a little breaker bar for the uh, 13 millimeter bolt. You need an extension to reach a bolt. I probably get away with a, a deep uh, 13. Um, a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws from the uh, turn signal and uh, wipers and I ended up using uh, PB Blaster because that bolt um, that holds the steering wheel in place was uh, seized in there pretty good and uh, I used my little uh, puller I only need to get this little uh, you, and you, you could have probably used a steering wheel puller too um, but I used a little hook hooked it on the uh, uh, the middle there and then with the hammer here I just banged on this end and then just pulled it straight out a couple taps and it was out all right front of the steering wheel there you go that's the 10 mil right there that you want to get out all right there's one on the uh left side and then one on the right side all right, so get get those out. Well, if the lighting sucks in here, oh well. I'm using a uh, a headlamp because obviously the uh, interior lights are off. The the lights off, and I don't want to hook up any dumb battery, any uh, lights. Well, anyways, I had already taken this off, um, save some time here, but and these bolts actually hold. Um, the horn in place you're gonna see it just pop out in a second here we go it's all you're taking out now you're good to remove it all right now what you're gonna see next is so I'm just rotating it up all right Jeep horn airbag carrier anyways the two bolts that you took out or right here, or future reference, so you can line it up whenever you put it back. Next, what you're going to do is disconnect um, this black connection here, and black and yellow, and then uh, all yellow connection. All these are, are is you're going to uh, press them like this, and then just pull them straight up. There you go. Show you in a second a little bit better. That's it. So remember, you're squeezing these and pulling it up. Whoa. Well, look at that. It just fell out. However, I also undid this little guy here, um, and I'll show you where it was connected. All right. Well, this black connection, I have it rigged up here so I can show you guys because... Uh, you want to see what uh, little spot I'm talking about that you have to press out. 
that little hole there you push use uh, I use a little uh, screwdriver and uh, pressed that little uh, it's like a little plastic button and you just slide the sucker out there you go so you removed these two connections this one here and now your your uh, horn airbag should come out that's out of the way now next connection is for you to remove the steering wheel is this one right here this top one so just push up and pull out there you go so it's in like this you are pushing that and then just I wiggled it and pulled it out alright now some of you may say well I know how to pull these suckers out but every little stupid plastic connection like this in the Jeep I've either broken off one of these little things these little clip ends because I'm not sure which way I'm pressing it or they're just stuck in there so that's why I'm showing you guys alright so now next is removing I believe this is a 13 mil bolt right here well I got the uh, 13 an extension and the ratchet this is a collapsible little El Cheapo uh, ratchet from Harbor Freight that extends uh, I thought I was gonna need a uh, the impact but show you that you can do it without an, uh, any air tools um, you I did have to grab the steering wheel and then obviously loosen it up um, there you go put it in the box there's only three bolts in that box so far the uh... the steering wheel itself has a little uh... a punch uh... that shows the top and the uh... The shaft itself with the splines has a little dot on the top as well. So that's how we're going to line it up. And I'll get a paint pan. I'm just going to, you know, emphasize that point. And uh, there's splines on the steering wheel. There's a small gap on the bottom. And there's a big gap um, on the driver's side. So it's just going to show us um, where, you know, the correct way to put it back in. All right, so knew how to get done. So the next easiest step I did was I took uh, this top part out. All right, and the bottom part out. There's three uh, T20 bolts uh, that hold it together. One's down here, directly in the bottom, and then the other two are this hole. In that hole. Now I got all sorts of uh, Torx bits and uh, Allen style Torx bit wrenches, and I decided to get this one right here because you need a. It has to be uh, thin and uh, pretty long to reach up in there. Um, I got this at AutoZone, five dollars I think. Well worth it. Um, now what you didn't see is me trying to bang the steering wheel out. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it, it did take some uh, some some work here. All I did was I I used this puller for uh, uh, to pull out the unit bearing. I don't remember what the hell I used this for. Anyways, uh, I think pull the to remove the shaft out of the unit bearing. Anyways, I used this puller. I put some PB blaster. Um, in the little splines, banged it around a little bit with the hammer, mallet, BFH, whatever. Banged it in there with the socket that, uh, this socket just to try to break the tension. Now, uh, I, I know uh, some people can use, uh, if you have the uh, air hammer, um, you can do that, or air chisel, just hit it around here just to break that, um, just to break that tension there. Anyways, um, if put it back here, pop, hit, hit it with the hammer here, and off it came. 
So, well, there you go. There's a clock spring right there. The uh, wipers and the turn signal and the li lights are all connected to there. Uh, now to take this baby out. Running out of daylight here. However, once the steering wheel is off, you got to take three bolts off. All right. Now I already took them out because I can't record and take it. Uh, take them out, remove them at the same time. Well, anyways, see, adjust. There we go. Just see the little slot there. Just moving it back and forth. That's one of them that you got to take out. The second one is that little hole there, right in front, and the third one is a little bit tricky. There we go. Right there. I had to cut my screwdriver so I could reach in there. Make sure that the column is all the way down and you'll be able to use one of these little guys. I also bought a set of these at Harbor Freight. Um, it, it got in there but it was too, it was rubbing and uh, pushing against uh, the trim here. Uh, this is a little too fat. Um, so, also have the T20 uh, little socket here. A little too, a little too big. So this one did the job. Remove all three. Once you remove all three, you can pop this sucker out. Then remove one, two, three, four little connections. Looks like they all just press and uh, pull up there. All right. Well, there you go. Look at that. Here's the, uh, the three connections right here, or four actually. One, two, three, and four. Um, see how this clock spring looks a little bit different than the 2007 to 2010. All the, all the um, controllers are attached to it, but it looks like it only has uh, two screws here, Phillips screws. So right, I'll show you. This light's killing me here. One there, and this is for the wipers. And the other one is right there for the lights, turn signal. Hmm. Look at this, just slide out. So, I'll show you the camera here. Literally just slide him out. And there's a connection. Surprise, surprise. Actually, it looks like the connect. You can leave the connection. Leave this. These wires attached. Uh, let's see, take the other screw out. Oh yeah, look at that. All right. Well. Oh, this this is crap. The Jeep needs to come out with something way better than this. Alright, now to open the new one. Still in the box. What's up, love? You know, and I did all this work without even checking if I had the right clock spring in the box. Uh, I got this clock spring from Rock Auto. Um, when I bought it, uh, there, was a, there was only one available, and it was the Mopar brand. I think it was 250. There you go. It's a new one. Do not pull this white tab, white yellow piece. Do not pull it out until it's it's back. Everything's back and attached to it. There you go. You just slide it in there. Route the cables back in there. And it, it, com it has little uh, rails. You see right here. Uh, this rail here. And little... Uh, you kind of see the rail there. That's one of them.
That's where you're guiding it on. Look at the camera. <gasps> wow, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> I know I didn't make a video of it, but Eliana helped me at, helped me uh, install the rear license plate uh, relocation bracket that comes with the little light. Yeah, you did, huh? <laughs> All right, that's tight. That's tight. Put the cables back in there. We're done out here. Let me cover everything that uh, that I just did. Um, connected the four electric connections on the clock spring. So the cl clock spring back on there. Put the three bolts back on there. One, two in the back here. Um, and then I, sla I snapped this uh, shroud back into place. I'm not going to put the bolts yet just in case something happens and i got to take it off again. But that way, it's I don't have to uh, put it on around the steering wheel. All right, next is the uh, steering wheel. All right, guys, we're pretty much just putting everything back together. <sighs> Tighten up the bolt. It's a 13. Remember, slid the steering wheel back all the way. Tighten up the bolt. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect the this cable here. The one goes in the middle. But first, you got now you can remove. This little plastic piece, white one, remove it, and then you just, oh, you just pull this one out. There you go. Lift it up and then down, and should be good. All right, and these are all new connections. It came with the uh, clock spring. My, the old one was kind of rusty. All right, so now we got to connect the uh, horn back on there. Let's see. See if it works. All right, guys. Well, uh, everything's back on. I put the, I tightened up the two bolts that hold the horn and airbag. Tighten those up. Remember those 10 mil. And then uh, there's three screws that hold the uh, these two upper and bottom little uh, plastic shrouds. Um, one of them doesn't look like the other two. Uh, the one directly underneath looks like the ones that hold the clock spring in place in the back. I actually started taking stuff apart to figure out where it went, but it goes on the bottom. Uh, uh, after that's done, hook up the battery, and before I turn it on, one of the things that uh, that was on was the uh, the airbag light was on, and my cruise control was not working. So here we go. Oh yeah. All right. So I'll take it for a spin, see if um, the cruise control works. I live in North Carolina and I get a safety inspection and it can't have any code up here. Uh, so if they're checking for something like that, you're going to have to drive it for, I don't remember how long, but I remember Kylie, after we just finished doing it, she drove straight to go get her inspection, and the code was still there. The lights were off, but it wasn't cleared from the computer, I guess. Uh, so make sure to do that. The light went out. I'm going to see if my uh, cruise control works. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh! see it but it says cruise on there. Uh, let me make sure it works. Set it to 40 something. Alright. Perfect. Now if I could only have had cruise control before our Dolce's trip, that would have been awesome. Well, anyways, thanks for watching guys. I apologize again for the crappy video lighting quality. You know, I wasn't going to make a video, but the only other video out there for this model Jeep, the dude spoke broken English. I mean, my English is bad too, but 
um, and he was driving a left hand, I mean a right hand drive JK, so I don't even know what country he's from, um, but thanks guys.